licenciado Fernando Monterroso, acompañe por favor al señor Richard M. Evelyn. Gracias, licenciado Monterroso. Doctor Evelyn, sea usted bienvenido al claustro de profesores de esta universidad. Todos estamos pendientes de sus palabras. I would like to thank the president, the board of trustees, the faculty, all those here at Francisco Marroquín for this deep and much appreciated uh, and great honor that they are bestowing upon me today. Indeed, I'm extremely humbled by having been selected for this honor, considering the illustrious people who have received it before me. But I also want to offer congratulations, and that is to each and every one of you who are graduating today. You have made a great accomplishment of finishing your education at Francisco Marroquín. You have acquired an internationally recognized quality education. It has prepared you for going out for the rest of your life to pursue whatever profession, occupation that you may choose and to do so successfully and to be able to achieve the goals that you hope to attain looking to the future. But besides the quality of the education, regardless of what your major or field has been, what has also been important in your learning experience is the underlying ideas and philosophy upon which the institution has been founded and continues to remain dedicated. And in my very few minutes, I want to draw attention to the importance of those founding ideas, if you will permit me. A little over 30 years ago, I was in Moscow in the old Soviet Union. It was August of 1991. The then head of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev, though dedicated to socialism, was attempting to introduce moderate and modest economic reforms. There were more dogmatic hardliners in the Soviet government and in the Soviet military who did not want any reforms, and they undertook a coup d'etat. And for three days, the country's future was hanging in the balance. Fortunately, the coup failed. And the next day, August 22nd, 1991, a great rally was held in a large plaza surrounding the Russian parliament building near the center of Moscow. Literally, it was an ocean of Russian people. Now, many people spoke there, but at one point, all eyes went up to the top of the building, at the flagpole. And coming down was the red Soviet flag with the yellow hammer and sickle in the left corner. And in its place went up the old traditional Russian colors, red, white, and blue. And suddenly, from this mass of people, came a chant, Svoboda, Svoboda, Svoboda. That is the Russian word for freedom, freedom, freedom. This huge group of Russians were now hoping that this would be, mean the end of their 75-year ordeal under Soviet socialism. They wanted to be like us a normal society, because theirs was not normal. They did not have the things 
that you and I take for granted in everyday life. Let's take an education. There were no private institutions like Francisco Marroquin. There were only state universities in which the government determined the curriculum, what would be taught, what books would be assigned, what would be allowed to be discussed in the classroom. When the students would do their exams or prepare a, a paper or some document on some theme that they had to uh, turn in and uh, to receive a grade on, what the student wrote had to follow in that broad sense, the party line. Otherwise you could face censor or even expelling, being spell, expelled from the institution. When you left, you didn't have a choice of profession and occupation like you now who are leaving will have the chance to do. The state took the attitudes then since it had given you your education, you owed it to follow the needs of the socialist central plan. And they dictated what job you would have, where you would work, the government apartment that would be assigned to you in the city which they insisted you would now live. And all of your future opportunities were dictated by how the party officials in the industry, the office, the factory to which you've been assigned had discussed not only whether you could do your work, but had you shown loyalty to the regime? Had you always been a good communist? That is what they wanted to escape from. Why they were chanting freedom, freedom, freedom. They wanted to be like us, choosing your own career, choosing your own profession, not be afraid of what you said, debated, argued, believed, and demonstrated in free association with others. Now, obviously, Russia has followed a very strange path since the 1990s, which we see in the tragedy of this war between Russia and Ukraine now, and the authoritarian nature of the Russian government. But those people at that time were dreaming to have the chance for an education like you. That is what Francisco Marroquin has been about since its founding, its founding idea, its founding vision, its founding principle, the right of the individual to have control over his own life, the right of the individual to choose what he thinks, what he says, with whom he associates, the ideas that he will read and think about and be able to express publicly without fear of censor or arrest or imprisonment or even being killed, as some were in the Soviet Union for what they said. This has been a special place. It has given you the foundations of not only the training for the path that you will follow now that you're graduating, but the important ideas of a free society, of a free individual, the workings and the ideals of the free market through which your freedom can be expressed in association and mutual improvement with others in a society of liberty. I congratulate you on your successes on this graduation day. I congratulate you on your free opportunity to follow your path. And I ask that as you do so, in your days from now on are filled with many things, that you not forget the founding principle of freedom, without which all that you have, and hopefully your children and great-grandchildren will have, without which it would not be possible. Congratulations. And thank you again to the university.